This is Olga Kirschenbaum with Nine Minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom. It is six questions in nine minutes because creatives have a short attention span. So let's get to it. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. I am Maria Thompson. I am a copywriter. I write landing pages and web pages. I own CopyDog LLC. I live in the boonies in Minnesota. And I am a dog owner, I, which is good to know because um, my main clients are pet companies. I am also, in addition to a pet owner, I am crazy about the arts and do artsy things as much as I can. Love that. So what is your favorite part about being a creative leader? The most fun is to make things happen for my clients. And um, what I mean by that is, you know, we always think that people know everything that we know. And people who, like the small and medium-sized businesses I work with, don't have usually copywriters on staff and don't have the background that I do. And it's fine because that's not their job. I also can't do tax accounting, but my tax accountant can, which is great. So I'm able to come in and advise them and help them connect with their clients and, um, you know, help them move down the sales channel. Because of my creativity, I'm able to do research and then write copy that is going to make that happen. And so that's kind of in a nutshell of the, I make things happen, quote unquote. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the nicest compliment I ever um, received is when I was still an employee. And um, one of the guys I worked with said um, that I was a combination of laser-like focus and freewheeling creativity. And I thought, that is so nice. Thank you. <laughs> that is beautiful. That's an awesome compliment. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I speak to a lot of creatives who avoid the money side of business. They'll do pretty much anything to avoid it. Tell me your right. thoughts on that. Oh boy. You know, I think I like a lot of creatives. You know, numbers are not my deal. Started out in the second grade. In the second grade, I was already freaking out about <laughs> math. I would get like sick to my stomach before math. But anyway, um, I think just is important. You know, you need to get used to the numbers. But I think for me, as important is the mindset around numbers because we're not used to thinking about money and talking about money and thinking that I want to make more money or anything around money is, you know, kind of a taboo topic. And as a business owner, you just can't do that. You have to have a really good kind of healthy mindset um, because what you're doing is you are have a service or a product, but in my case, I have a service and I have expertise that I exchange for money to other um, business owners. And you have to have a real good handle on what that is actually, that expertise is worth. And you can't say, oh, well, you know, I only have this much experience and then kind of play down what you are really worth and also feel bad about, you know, I really shouldn't charge them this much because whatever, you cannot do that. You cannot survive as a business owner and do that. So you really have to get an idea of what your expertise is, um, what you should actually be charging. And also that mindset of that is what you're doing because you're working with other business owners. And also that whole idea of making money and wanting to make more money is okay. And especially because a lot of us go from being an employee to being a business owner. And so what you do, you know, however much you make as a biz, um, an employee, making that same amount as a business owner is not gonna do it because you have all those other costs, you know, that your employer did for you. You know, even that of 
in and of itself um, needs to, to be more. So, so the whole thing, the conversation about money, just you need to get real, you need to get confident and okay with it. Even if you're not, you know, you're not talking to your neighbors about it, but you need to get comfortable with it, with yourself or, and, you know, a loved one or whoever. But it, it's a mindset thing and it really can make or break you. So who are the creatives that you admire or have inspired you on your journey? The first person I thought of is Todd Henry. And um, I've been listening to his podcast and reading his books and reading his stuff for a long time. Um, Sometimes I don't listen to his podcast because sometimes it's kind of challenging. And I was like, oh, I can't listen to him today because I can't deal with that challenge. But (laughs) he has a lot of good people on his podcast. But The thing I really like about him, and I keep coming back to it, is he has a really wide point of view about creativity or creatives. A lot of times when you think about creatives, you're like, oh, well, it's somebody who writes or paints or or something that's traditionally creative. And that is not his his definition of it. It, His definition of it is anything that, anyone who creates something from nothing. So you can be like, a carpenter, which some people would call a creative anyway, but you could also be writing code because you are creating something out of nothing. But I bet a lot of people who write code wouldn't say, well, I'm a creative. Um, So I I really like that definition of it because it really, it really helps me understand my work too, because what I'm creating is something out of nothing. I love that. So what is the one piece of wisdom or advice that other creatives should know? Well, I'm speaking in particular for writers um, and the other writers I know. You know, it's really easy to be hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. And there's so so many things that you could do and you think you should do. And there's, you know, oh, I should try this. I should try this. And at the end of the day, a lot of times it's like, I didn't do enough. I didn't try hard enough. I could work more hours. And then there are other days when you think, I don't even know what I accomplished. Maybe I kicked the can down the street. I don't even know if I did that. And so (laughs) this is something I learned from, um, I use a Panda planner, but something I, I use in that, which is at the end of day, end of the day, you write down three or four things that are wins for the day. And they don't have to be things like I booked a $75,000 client, (laughs) but they could be, I had a difficult conversation and we, uh, we came to some kind of agreement or, you know, I got to my crappy first draft on that blog post and I've been avoiding it or whatever it is that you just say, you know what, I did that today and that's great. And then at the end of the week, you look back on all those things and you're like, hey, look what I did this week. And I think for me, it just, especially as a business owner where you create your own work, you assign your own work, it really helps keep you kind of honest with yourself. And then also that pride too, because you don't have someone saying, I need you to do this, this, and this by this date. You don't have that except for, you know, client work, obviously, but some of that, you know, even that is wiggly because you could say, well, it's due in August. Well, you know, whether or not I do it now or later might not, you know, I could procrastinate it till July 5th, you know, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, um, just the whole idea of kind of giving yourself that, um, that thanks and um, pat on the back. Um, I really like doing that. Powerful. So now the most important question of the <laughs> podcast, Kakaya Vasha Lubima Musica, or in English, what's your favorite music? My favorite music is German pop music. And especially the singer Herbert Grunemeyer and the band Revolver Held. Love it. Yes. Well, thank you, Maria, for being on. What is the best way for our listeners to connect with you? Sure. Um, my email address is maria at copydog.co, not com, not dot com, but dot co. Awesome. And I'll include that in the show notes. Okay. This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of creative wisdom podcast. 
where creatives share their wisdom. Make sure you check out my blog at rags to riches consulting.com to get money insights you haven't heard before.